Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Purdue, this game felt like it was stuck in neutral for a while, gentlemen, because Purdue just had an arm's length distance and it never really got all that dramatic. The Boilers are heading to the national title game. Your biggest takeaway. It was exactly what we thought it was going to be. It, it played out. It's very rare that we sit there and we spend like a day talking about what a game is going to be like and then it ends up being exactly what we say that it's going to be. NC State couldn't get anything going because what they want to do is force you to make a decision with DJ Burns. He couldn't beat Zach Eady. They didn't double. They couldn't really get anything going offensively. DJ Horn got him going a little bit, but it wasn't enough. Then at the other end, NC State's guards, man, just climbed up in Purdue, forced them away from the basket, forced Braden Smith to play uh, one of the worst halves of basketball. I've seen a very, very high-level point guard just play halves. in a long time. the worst time. game he played all year. Yeah, he, that was he, – he's an All-American-ish caliber player, yeah. and he looked like John Fanta. Was he was rattled. Point for yeah, he was rattled. He, was, he, he saw the – Whoa, whoa, my man Fanta does windmills. Don't do that. <laughs> Thank you, Randolph. <laughs> and uh, broke a St. Bernard at CYO record with 28 points in a game. <laughs> Continue. You know, I, you know, I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, it was just quite a stray by you. Yeah, no. I'm trying to navigate a segment here. <laughs> You're right. I'm so, oh boy. Oh boy. What did you? You seem to think when Rob said when Rob said it was exactly how we yeah, thought it was going to go. You think don't think so. so? Well, yes. The the game overall that maybe like NC State played close, but not. They frustrated Zach Eady. I mean, yeah. think about it. There was a long stretch where Zach we Eady thought didn't. They, we thought they would, though. Like we thought, really? Yes, we thought. I don't they, know what, we did. Did we say? what did we say? Did what did we, we say? That they're going to be able to force Purdue to push their offense out and run it from 40 feet away. Did you notice every time that, that Braden Smith got a ball screen, he's getting the ball screen in the logo. He's yeah. not getting the ball screen at the three-point line. And then once that happens, it pushes everything out. Now Zach Eady is catching the ball 15 feet away from the basket instead of eight feet away from the basket. And as he's trying to back you down, this is what I thought they did really well. And tell me if this is crazy because you know this better than I do. When they would double him, they doubled as soon as he put the ball down. Yes. And my guess is because they're doing it from the strong side, they're saying that it's going to take him so long to dribble it because he's seven foot four bouncing it that we can they get can there and either it. make a steal yeah. or by the time that we get there, he's gonna we can get the rotation because you normally don't double the post from the strong side. He burned him a couple of times yeah. because he they, they came on the catch and he saw it and he sprayed it to the corner and they knocked down threes. Uh, other Gillis and, and the other guys, they, they oh, just Gillis made a huge he three. He made a huge three. Oh. They were ready. He, they punished him a couple of times coming on a double. Um, and I think the adjustment the state made was, again, they started coming when he started putting it on the floor. And it was a cat and mouse game, man. Edie was – sometimes he dribbled, he bounced it, he kicked it out, they threw it back in. I mean, it was just a hell of a game. But what we thought we were going to get from those guards, it was exactly what we said. I think the biggest difference is DJ Burns' foul trouble because yeah. he was – he more effective. Score. He was more effective scoring over Z. Sure. Uh, Zach Eady didn't. I Anybody think people gave him credit. I, I want to yeah. do that every time I say his name. I want to call him Zidi too. Like I, I think every it, single it, time it, I want to call it, him it, Zidi. It, it just, no, it just takes me a minute. Like when I say Zach, <laughs> I have to sit there and say Zach Eady because yeah. I want to say Zidi. I thought I thought Ben Middlebrooks was awesome for them defensively. Mm -hmm. Like that was the thing. Like mm -hmm. DJ Burns goes out and offensively, yeah, it's gonna hurt him. But I thought Middlebrooks was really good. He, I, he frustrated Edie in ball screen coverage. He kept getting back. You know, you know like I wild? thought he did a really good job. You know what's wild about this? We're we're talking about him frustrating Zach Edie, which is yeah. true. Yeah, he they, did. He, Zach Edie did not play yeah. great. He finished with 20 points, 14 boards, right. four assists, two blocks, a nine for 14 shooting. And Jeff Goodman, welcome back to State Farm Stadium after Purdue and UConn are on to the national championship game. Let's keep talking about the Boilermakers because I thought about this as NC State is scoring 50 points in an entire Final Four game. Two short years ago, when the season ended, Purdue in Ken Palm defensive efficiency was 93rd. Last year when the season ended, they were 24th. This year, they're 12th, and that number's going to go up after this performance. In what ways have you seen Matt Painter evolve? Well, I mean, listen, he's always been a hell of a defensive coach. That's one of the things Matt Painter's been known for, and they got away from it a couple years ago. And if you talk to him about it, he's not going to single out Jaden Ivey. But, but that was part of the problem, right? Jaden Ivey could score, and he could be an electric defender if he wanted to be. He could be a great defender. He just he didn't put his mind to it a, a lot of the time. So I, I think this team is, again, you've got Zach Eady, right? So you've got that guy that – you know, can patrol the paint. And he's not like a, a big-time shot blocker necessarily. 
But he's somebody that, again, everybody knows when they take it in there that he's going to alter it. He's big. Uh, he's strong. He's just kind of a different type of of, of rim protector. He, you know, again, he's just not going to block a ton of shots. He doesn't try to. Like, that's the thing. He, Rarely. Like the, he's, he can come from behind. He's a lot of times, that's what he can do he's fairly very, well. He's very deliberate in the shots that he tries to get. He's never because in foul I, trouble, too. I think he really understands that that those two points don't matter as much as him being on the floor for 40 minutes. RC, you've seen this NC State team a bunch throughout the season. Right. Why did they only score 50 points tonight? Because they have in half court, their point guard wasn't effective. He wasn't there. I mean, I, I can't stress enough how important for them DJ Burns is on the offensive end of the floor. And I think the lineup where this team is taken off is because now with with uh, Middlebrook or Diara aside him, those guys have been able to clean up the glass, do other things defensively. But he is the de facto point guard in the half court. DJ Horn did his part on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah. He needed the point guard to be on the floor, and he just wasn't there. They didn't have both of their point guards. Yes. They didn't have Michael O'Connell yeah. with a hamstring injury. Yeah. Wow. He was out, then he comes back in, and he can't move. And another I mean, thing we, we got well. to mention, too, is that even for Muhammad Diara, it's Ramadan, and he's lost 12 pounds. Is that right? Yeah. Someone told me he's lost wow. 12 pounds. Not to mention he's I mean, up at he's up at 4 a.m. every morning right I now. I can't believe somebody can play that hard for that long, for not eating and drinking all – like, imagine. No, and and that's what, and I thought when you saw him, I didn't think that he, he got pushed around a little bit early yeah. because of that. Yes. I, I think he was fatigued, and credit for him just to battle the way he did and what he's Amazing. been through. I, I think, again, it, it's, it's just – I just wanted to say that about him because I think yeah. he's had a heck of a year, and it just says a lot about I, him. I think it puts him – to perspective what Adama Sanogo did last year as the final four most outstanding mm -hmm. like he because he dealt with all that yes yeah. right it's not it's not easy Crazy. he was dominant with, as the MVP yeah. and we're talking about yeah no doubt on the other side as Purdue advances here's the list all time of players who have posted at least 140 points and 70 rebounds in an NCAA tournament Elvin Hayes back in the 1960s yeah, yeah I watched him plenty Jerry Jerry West and Zach Eady so at this point, let me be the one to tell you that if you still are against the tree for the Purdue Boilermakers, you are a moron. I mean, seriously, you, you, are, you, you are a clown if you're still against what this guy is doing. And, that, and if you're going to be that way heading into Monday's national championship game, then you don't like fun. Because what we've got on Monday is the first time that two seven-footers are starting a national title game since Patrick Ewing and Hakeem Olajuwon 40 years ago. Yeah, the thing that I, I love about this matchup is that um, it, it's the storylines that we're getting out of this, oh, right? Man. We have so the first back-to-back -back national player of the year since I don't even know when, right? Ralph have, Sampson. Ralph Sampson. Ralph Sampson. We have the first potential back-to-back uh, national title team since 2007. We have a team that is looking to be the most dominant team in the college basketball modern era. We also have a team that was the – the biggest chokers in all of college basketball coming up with a chance to be able to go from losing to a 16 seed to beating a one seed. And guys, this is a fact, something you might want to take to the bank, something we should have told John Henson before he know. left out of here. Do you know where the bank is? Yeah, I know where the bank is. I'll be <laughs> Could able to you get, get to there. the bank? I'll be able to get there if you, as long as you don't give me the directions. <laughs> oh. A team that lost to a 16 seed has never lost a game in the next NCAA oh, tournament. Thanks. thanks. Wow, that yeah. was yeah. that was really, really riveting, uh, insightful news. Who was Facts. that sponsored by? Factual. <laughs> that rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, this you just said it, Jeff. Like this is an incredible national championship yeah. game. It's what we've wanted all year. It's what we've wanted all year and, and you don't always get it. No. And now it's here after again a national semifinal we were worried about. And you've got the two big boys. Right. And, and big boys being, you know, obviously Zach Eady and Klingon. So they haven't really gone up against anybody their size and their talent level all year. The best month of the year is here, which is why you need to know that we are partnered with Bet MGM. We'll be using Bet MGM lines for making all of our picks and predictions, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68. If you haven't signed up for Bet MGM yet, you can use bonus code FIELD and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with Bet MGM. Here's the best part. 
All you need to do is deposit and bet $10 of your hard-earned money to get it. This is what you have to do to make it work. Download the BetMGM app and sign up using that bonus code FIELD. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game. You'll get up to $1,500 in bonus bets if your bet loses. Just make sure you use that bonus code FIELD when you sign up. Most importantly, we have some fun stuff coming up for the rest of the NCAA tournament. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops odds boost, and the thing that I love the most, a nice little parlay boost, as well as a ridiculous array of profits for anything that you could possibly imagine betting on. From odds on getting to the Final Four to national championship futures, I'm calling it right now. BetMGM is the king of the prop bet. So go download the BetMGM app. Use that code FIELD and sign up today. And while I've got you a quick request, the best way to support the Field of 68 content you get for free is to engage with us. Rate and review the pod in any podcast app. Like and share the YouTube videos that you enjoy. Tell your friends about us. It all helps in a world where the algorithm is king. And now, back to the show. <laughs> 